David Stewart, he is the founder of Aegist, a media company whose purpose is to reinvent how life is lived, experienced, and understood by those who are over 50. He's also an award-winning photographer whose work has appeared in GQ, Esquire, Time Magazine, Forbes, Glamour, just to name a few. And David has been really busy lately. Uh, he's been publicly speaking, um, such as at the Monocle Conference in Zurich and TEDx in New Jersey. And today we had the privilege to spend a little time with David to learn more about what he does and where he sees the lives of those who are 50 or going. And David will also give us some of the secrets to longevity that he's learned from the many amazing people who are truly defying their age and who he has interviewed and photographed over the years. Years ago, like what inspired you? Why did you to create this? Well, uh, you know, um, I was just curious. Um, you know, I don't really go into things with, like, a grand plan. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, w when we started, it was just like, I thought, this is weird. Uh, why, what's with the millennial marketing obsession? I don't get it. Uh-huh. Why? You know, why do you not get it? Well, because, like, I know all these, like, really cool, smart people who are avid consumers, and nobody is speaking to them. Um, and when they try and speak to them, they speak to them in this way that um, uh, indicates that there's something wrong with them, um, that they have some kind of a built-in disability because they're, like, a certain age. And I thought, I don't feel like that. Um, <laughs> my, yeah. my friends don't feel like that. So, um, but, you know, what's going on here? And when we started this, we thought that, well, we felt that this was kind of like emerging edge behavior within a larger group. And we thought that it was like a very small community of people, but it's not. Um, what we found was that uh, it's really like millions and millions of people all over the world. Um, and that... Um, you know, for a lot of reasons, um, this group is um, growing dramatically um, in, in numbers and influence. Um, we don't aim to speak for everybody who's over 50. I think that's a really big mistake. Mm. Um, I think that that's one of the traps that people fall into. Mm -hmm. uh, like, no one, like, no one would think to, like, speak to all 20 year olds or something it doesn't make sense mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and as people get older these sort of um the splintering of the population and essentially the tribalization of the population becomes much much stronger mm -hmm. but the stake that people make is they say oh well let's talk to everybody who's like 50 to 65 well that just turns into like a big nothing yeah. um so, you know, we speak, um, we illuminate a certain kind of person living in a certain kind of way. Mm -hmm. And there are, uh, we frame it in an aspirational way. Uh, so um, we try to be like a North Star for what, what is possible by showing people examples of other people who live in a certain way. And we, you know, we have the ability to, we, we could put famous people on every week, but um, we don't, um, because I, I think it's important to, to see that people understand that, like this way of being is, um, it's not weird. It's not George Clooney, you know. It's this like, is I, I do find that inspiring, and I do when I read your material and I look at your Instagram and your and your Facebook and your website, and I get your newsletter, which I think is absolutely amazing. Um, you, I am inspired by these people. Um, they're they are doing all different kinds of things. Um, I I I want to go back to the reason why you um, created this community. Um, it, and what is it? And why did you call it ageist? And what is ageist or being ageist or ageism? Like everybody has a lot of definitions. I want to hear yours. Well. Uh it was a long discussion. Um, you know, the name, there's so much, so much horrid, terrible language and visuals um, used uh, for this group of people. And it usually involves the word silver or golden or gray or sunset 
or some god awful like horrid thing. And so we just said, well, uh, we're not going to go there. Um, you know, we thought, well, what's really, what is the single underlying core issue here? Mm -hmm. And we thought, well, um, I guess it's ageism. So uh, we, as a um, as a publication and community, um, acknowledge that that exists, but it's not really our purpose to push back on it. Mm -hmm. um, what we feel is like uh, we're a little bit punk rock about it. So, what? How, where, how do you see people in general aging, and where are we headed, and how can you tie these sort of two groups together? Kind of a big question. Um, I, I will say that in, in in general, the people that we profile, if you met them, you would just think. Um, that they're kind of normal. They're like nothing, you you know, there's nothing terribly exceptional about them. I mean, there's some, like the woman we did today, though, so, you know, she had a, a brain injury, she's in a wheelchair, she can't speak, and she does um, skydiving, among other things. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is, a, this is a really exceptional human being. Yeah. Uh, so once in a while we do that, but um, in general, um, what we do is we illuminate the, the purpose of the interviews, the purpose of the profiles is to show people possibilities and to illuminate qualities that we think match with um, what we're about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my feeling is that so much of what people think is possible, what they, I mean, I have a saying, hard, like, <laughs> hard is not impossible. Hard is just hard. Mm -hmm. It's not impossible. And... I think people, um, especially as they get a little older, they kind of clip off the edges of what they think is possible. Mm. And it's really, the range is much, much greater than what they think, but they've been told by all this silly, um, you know, medicalized imagery and language that like, you know, that like, I have a disability because I'm 59. Mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't. I choose not to believe that. And, I, and, you know, the people that we engage with also, they, they don't buy into that. Yeah. Is, there, is there anyone in particular, like if you had to choose one or two people who have inspired you that you've met and you've been kind of surprised by, who would it be? You know, every week it's like, well, Olga today. So Olga was a Colombian diplomat in Boston who had um, some minor surgery that resulted in a severe brain injury. And she was told she could never leave the hospital. And so what does she do? She's like, she can't speak. She's entirely paralyzed. And so she says, she says nope, I'm going to learn to speak. And I'm going home to Colombia, a third world country where there's no infrastructure to take care of me. Uh -huh. And I live there. I'm going to get better. And then I'm going to do stuff I want to do. Like, I want to go to Africa. I want to go see llamas in Peru. I want to learn how to skydive. Uh, she's written wow. three books since, since this. The interview had to be con conducted through her son because her um, she still can't really speak. So he has to kind of like interpret for her. So like if you think about what's, um, what's possible, yeah, uh, you know, uh, that's pretty inspiring. That is. Uh, another really interesting one is um, Trisha Kuzden who, um, Trisha was at 64, she, uh, she lives in the UK, and she retired from her job, mm -hmm. and um, she's like, okay, I'm going to retire, so what should I do? She didn't know what to do. So she took up baking cupcakes. It's like, okay. So after six months, she was like, I'm going to shoot myself in the head <laughs> I, with the cupcakes. Like, like, I need a life. So she decides what she's going to do is she's going to start a makeup company because makeup doesn't work on her skin the way it used to. Ah. So her business plan is she convinces like a local makeup lab somehow to make her a collection of lipsticks and she's going to put them in a plastic tub and knock on doors and try and sell this. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, in the process, she, um, she makes a website and the photographer's like, oh, well, you should make a video. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she's like, well, why would anyone care about a grandmother putting on makeup? And he's yeah. like, let's just do it. Well, like, you know, five million YouTube views later, wow. uh, 
she has a company that um, doubles in revenue and doubles in her staff every six months. Two years ago, she was the, um, I love this story, the uh -huh. Google runs a uh, Digital Entrepreneur of the Year Award. So it's her on stage, a 64-year-old, at that point, 65-year-old English grandmother who looks very much like a 65-year-old English grandmother. Yeah. Um, there's nothing, like, exceptional about her when you look at her. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, all the rest of them are guys. They're all under 25. <laughs> Witness. <laughs> And, and she turns around and she looks at them and she says, I'm not who you think I am. She's like, you how, you, how do you see people aging in general and where are we going? Is, is, are we all, do you think that's the majority of the people? No, I, I think that you got to be careful with the general um, because it's very different. Uh, my, my wife's family lives in North Georgia. Um, 55 in North Georgia is a very different thing than 55 in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that, um, you know, unfortunately, if you look at the, the life expectancy, um, and um, life expectancy is very linked to um, how people's, um, to their behavior, not just to their past behavior, but their future behavior. Mm -hmm. So people who tend to not have as much education or as a, um, you know, financial assets, financial means, their life expectancy is dramatically lower. Mm -hmm. um, and that's very sad, but that's, um, that's the reality. And if someone thinks, you know, like somewhere like, you know, West Virginia, your life expectancy is going to be 68, 70. So at 60, um, you probably, you know, this, um, you're probably not in very good shape and you're going to behave accordingly. Mm. But if you think that at, you th at 60, you think you're going to be alive another 40 years, you behave in a very different way. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's really, um, it, you know, with some of the large brands that we work with, we, we really try and um, move the needle on those morbidity numbers. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And that involves essentially making, taking the idea of longevity out of a medicalized disability question into something that's attainable and aspirational. Mm -hmm. um, for ageists, the site and our community, um, it's kind of a different thing. Um, you know, you have people like if Tricia thought that she was going to be dead in a year, mm -hmm. she would not be doing this. Yeah. Uh, it, like there's a whole cascade of things and that's, that's the difference now between 20 or 30 years ago. It's like, it's, yeah. it's your belief and your belief system, uh, as well that may yeah. determine how long you're, you're going to live. Because well, yeah, but they're, they're tied, right? So, um. Uh, you're probably at 50 or 60, you probably have a pretty good sense of what your, con your condition is. Yeah. So, you know, if I'm 60, I weigh 350 pounds, I have type 2 diabetes, I have metabolic failure, I have all this other stuff going on, I, it would be irrational of me to believe that I'm going to live to 100. Yeah. But if I'm, if I'm, you know, like now I'm, I'm, I weigh 164 pounds, I'm 59 years old, you know, I might get hit by lightning tomorrow if I run over a truck, but I have a pretty good, you know, I can have a rational expectation of living to 95 or 100. That makes, mm -hmm. so, um, you know, the decisions that the person, that people make over a period of, of a lifetime, um, there are consequences, good and bad. Like everything you do pays a dividend, mm -hmm. positive or negative. There's mm -hmm. a commission happening there. Mm -hmm. So um, some people have chosen to live in a certain way. Um, and um, some of that, some people can make course corrections there. Mm -hmm. and um, But sometimes you can't. Um, there's just too much damage. And that's, mm -hmm. 
um, you don't want to get to that point. You know, all the people you've met, some pretty impressive people um, who are defying aging or are doing incredible things with their lives. Um, what do you think, what have you seen are, are some of their secrets to aging and longevity? Do they, do they share something in common? Yeah. Yeah, they do. What do uh, there's like a couple of kind of core traits. So um, the um, curiosity, they're all very curious. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and the curiosity, curios- so the curiosity leads to exploration of possibility. Ah. Um, so that's kind of a key. I, I've talked with a lot of um, people who are smarter than I about like how do you provoke curiosity in people that are incurious. Yeah. Like incurious people, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand how you can like live like that. But they exist. I've met them. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, you know, I think curiosity is a good one. Um, the uh, the belief in lifelong self improvement, mm. so that that involves lifelong learning, that involves like um, physical and health things, it involves um, exposure to other cultures, like having a certain amount of tolerance to um, be exposed to something completely different, mm-hmm. and like not necessarily adopt it, but be okay with that existing. Mm, so that, yeah. that's, um, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, those are a couple of traits that yeah, not a lot of people have shared. It's very unique, but I think you're absolutely spot on. And it is interesting that they all share, share that. And I see that as well in the communities that I visit. And I have to agree, yeah, that is one of their, their common traits. And um, what about you? Because you're you're doing pretty good. You're you know creating this business. You're fifty nine. You said I just can't believe it. I can't. <laughs> I can't believe. So you're you're in great shape and great health, and and you have this drive. You have all the energy. What what are you doing to defy aging? It's it is like hard work though. Like you. Um if you want to kind of, if you want to stay on your game, um, it's the, it, it, it's like a lot of work. Um, so, you know, my, myself, um, uh, I have a fairly disciplined exercise program. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, All your life or is this something new? Well, I find that, um, you know, I've exercised for the last 25 years or something, but it's, I, I think as you get older, you, um, I mean, just speaking for myself, I, I, I really had to apply a lot of science to it. Mm-hmm. Like it, it was just, it's not, it's for me, it doesn't work as well anymore to just like, Oh, I'll do this class or today. Maybe I'll go like do this thing or that thing. Like I really had to, um, understand, um, stress and recovery on my body. Mm-hmm. Because that um, uh, becomes like a much bigger deal. It like when I was like forty or forty five, it was like you know didn't really matter. But now that kind of that um, stress recovery cycle, I had to really understand. Mm. And so like you know, I do at the moment, and um, I change every once in a while. I just get like. It's like I've done whatever enough. I'm sick of it. Uh, <laughs> let's do something else. Uh, but at the moment, you know, it's really, I had to kind of look and say like, all right, it, because also I, I have this like startup, so I don't have a lot of time. Yeah. So I have somewhat efficient about it. So I have to say, okay, like what are the main problems here? All right. So, um, you know, lack of your bone density tends to go down. Your bone mass goes down. Muscle mass goes down. Fat tends to go up, um, mobility issues, um, cardiovascular stuff. So, okay, so what can I do to, like, um, take care of that? And I and to me, it's kind of like the um, – this is the same theory I apply to, like, what I eat. It's like first you take care of the big rocks. Mm-hmm. Like, worry about the little rocks, yeah. Take care of the big rocks. Mm-hmm. Once you get the big rocks dialed in, then you can go to, like, little rocks. 
And, you know, to me, the, the, the main big rock stuff is really um, muscle mass. Mm. So, uh, um, you know, I, and I think that, you know, cardiovascular uh, capacity is probably number two. But um, muscle mass is going to affect everything else. So that's going to affect your, um, it's going to affect your hormones. It's going to affect your metabolism. It's going to affect your, um, your fat, which is actually a hormone generator. Um, and that's what really falls off as you get older mm. uh, and your bone density. So I said, okay, so what can I do to like take care of that? Like pick up really heavy things. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, and standardize it and regulate and regularize it. And I, like, I keep a notebook, it's very, um, disciplined and it's, uh, you know, I'm constantly adjusting that stress recovery window. Super important. And, but that being said, like, what about the diet? Because there well, be certain things. So they go together. So, um, these things are interlocking. So, um, to me, the greatest health threat is this um, is this glucose insulin reaction that happens in your body, and that's like um, like I I don't eat fruit. I don't eat like high high fructose. In it. Like I just I, no stay away. Mm -hmm. um, I eat a lot of fat and I eat a lot of protein. I eat things to kind of keep that glucose level down. And as you the more muscle, so there's there really three places in your body that you can put glucose. Mm -hmm. So anytime you eat a, um, any kind of carbohydrate, it gets broken down um, either slowly or quickly, it turns into glucose, goes into your uh, bloodstream, insulin, um, and there's a whole chemical thing that happens. So now that glucose can either get stored, the first place it's going to go is in your muscle cells. Mm -hmm. So if you've depleted your glucose levels in your muscle cells, that's, and that's what powers your body mm -hmm. so that'll you will fill those up so the more muscle you have the more glucose you can store mm -hmm. um, number two is it goes to your liver so now okay fill up the liver okay great now we've got glucose left, left over where does it go well what happens is and there's a um, a wonderful description I read in what is his name the transcend uh, Ray Kurz Kurzweil's book talks about the next thing that happens is it, it, it goes into your blood and it turns your blood into this pink foamy stuff because it's filled with fat. Yeah. And this gets attached into your body. And this is where all the bad stuff happens <laughs> when that happens. So, you know, if you, uh, you know, all the linkages between that chemical reaction and Alzheimer's and cancer and diabetes and just like every kind of bad thing you can think of tends to come from that. Accelerated aging, pretty much. You know, I, I tell people like um, food is not for fun. <laughs> that when you mentioned that to Frank, my husband, my French husband, is like, yeah, I don't it, think that it, goes with the French. Like, food is for fun when you're like 14, you're eating creamsicles on the street. <laughs> Uh, but like food is fuel, um, and food is medicine and whatever you eat, um, you, you know, what does the saying go? You are what you eat, mm -hmm. but even more than that, you are the thing that like, it, it, like if you eat a chicken, you're not just the chicken, you're, you're whatever the chicken ate. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I think that, um, the food thing is really complicated. It's it's much much harder than the exercise thing. I think everyone is different. I'm I'm not in favor of these like oh you have whatever blood type you got to eat like this or you're this tall you gotta, I don't know it's the phase of the moon or whatever God you know whatever it's really um, you know some people are very sensitive to lectins other people aren't. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, it's a but I think they're kind of like generalized, kind of like big rock theory with the food too. What's that? You know, that? like like cow milk, especially like non-organic, non-grass-fed cow milk, bad, bad, bad. You know, white sugar, bad. White flour, bad. <laughs> like you know, and 
and you gradually, I think with, with the food, Zora, it's not so much adding, it's subtracting. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, like, you know, maybe nightshades, maybe, uh, maybe that doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. um, and figuring out what are the things to remove to optimize the rest of it. Yeah, those are the little rocks. The big rocks, I, you know, are like the processed foods, and I agree yeah, with you. I, 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 yeah, yeah. Kind of, if you can, like, get rid of that from your life, you can eat percent away there. That's the big rock. And then the other stuff, everybody's a little bit individual, but something we can all agree on, I think, is the processed food. But tell me, David, what is the one thing that you do every day that makes the biggest difference in your life in terms of you know, aging or, or the way you feel? Um, my, uh, my morning meditation. Really? Yeah. And what do you get uh, from that? In a, in a literal sense, it changes my mind. Hmm. Uh, um, and... Um, it's something that allows me um, to be more flexible in my work. Um, it helps me to communicate with the people that we speak with. It helps me. Um, I'm just like a happier person. Um, it like puts in a circuit breaker in my head. Uh, and it's really... Um, it's something that's shockingly powerful. That's great. Uh, I mean, that, when did you start meditating? How long ago? I, I, so, I've been trying to meditate for about 35 years. Um, and I failed for 30 of them. And I, I tried, I mean, I, I hung out with the Zen Buddhists. I, there were the Hindus, the this, the that. Really? And it just like... I don't know. I just could It was like I couldn't do it. And then um, a friend of mine, who uh, she's an incredibly cranked up um, New York attorney, um, I saw her one day, and she was a little like different. I said, "What's up?" And she's like, "Been meditating." It's like, "Oh my god!" Like, ha, ha, you? And she's like, "Yeah, yeah. I use an app." So um, she turned me onto this app um, called Headspace, um, and I did that for about. It's kind of like training wheels, like, and they, and so I did it for about a year, and then I got kind of irritated with his voice, um, <laughs> so I didn't need him anymore, um, and now I do a thing called Insight Timer, which is just, um, it's like a timer, and uh, I, my mind will wander, so you're able to add, like, gongs to it, so, like, more gongs, so I put, like, a ton of gongs in, <laughs> so, um, you know, like, in 20 minutes, I don't know how many gongs fall, but um, it's like... <laughs> Why the gongs? What do you? What are the purpose of the gongs there? Well, the gongs are just that to like, to like tell you like stop daydreaming and like fantasizing about whatever. Yeah. Get back to what you're doing here, and and then it's like, oh yeah, yeah, right, okay. okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. That's actually great to hear that you've tried and or failed and and then right. just but you just plotted on through and you and you kept going until it just kind of clicked, right. And, it's, the funny thing is, or we um, we do a lot of research with our community, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember it was a I don't know we've been at it for a couple of years, and we asked somebody this question, um, and they just were like, oh yeah, I meditate, and, and this was somebody that I knew really well that I'd known for a long time. Yeah, he's like, you meditate? And he's like, yeah, I meditate with my wife every morning, twenty minutes. It's like, really? How long have you been doing that? And he's like, oh, like ten years. It's like. I had no idea. So then we thought, I, I, I called up my partners. I'm like, uh, I, hmm. So um, we went back and asked, like, you know, several hundred people. And I don't know, 80% of them were like, oh, yeah, I meditate. It's like, really? So, um, yeah. So what, what, why did you start meditating? What, what made you well, think why I should do this? I started because, well, I... I um, Everybody says it's a good idea. <laughs> they said this is a good idea, and um, this is what the uh, these are the benefits. And I saw my friend, who is just you know, type A plus, a clerk on the Supreme Court, like cranked, and she, and it's like wow, um, you can do this. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and 
what happened was as I started Zora, I could I could feel things changing. So um, yeah. So there what, you go. what? Why did you start meditating? What? What made you well, think why I should do this? I started because well, I I um, everybody says it's a good idea. <laughs> They said this is a good idea, and um, this is what the uh, these are the benefits. And I saw my friend, who is just you know, type A plus, a clerk on the Supreme Court, like cranked, and she, and it's like wow, um, you can do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and what happened was, as I started Zora, I could I could feel things changing. And I want to ask you, is there anything, um, you know, the future of ageist, is there something, a message you can share with us, uh, either what what us as a community in this, this ageist space or a wellness, a longevity space that we can do to support you or uh, where, where are you going to be taking ageist and how can we come along for the ride? Oh, well... Um you know, I always like people to sign up for the newsletter. That's kind of like our main vehicle of communication. Um, That's the best. I love it. I love it. You keep doing a good job with that. I really, really enjoy it. Like it's, uh, it's so, I can't believe that every week we produce this thing. Like, yeah, it's in, It's just insane. Um, it's but, hard to stay yeah, on top of a newsletter every week, too. Like, you doing it. You're not skipping a it, beat. No, I got to do, you know, like the pictures, the art, it's like... Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but, you know, I think that um, ageist in a year is going to be very different than it is now. Um, and in five years, it's, you know, it's going to be very, very different. Again, um, I think that, you know, we, we're just kind of at the beginning here. Even though we've, we've done this for a few years and we've made a lot of mistakes, we've, we've learned a lot of things. Now we're, you know, now what's happening is um, we're getting a lot of attention from like big global brands. That really, what's happening, Zora, is that we're we're at this kind of tipping point, right? So, I, like, and I, the reason I know this is because even two a year ago, people wouldn't take our calls. They didn't want to. They didn't want to know about us. They're like, oh, there's old people. <laughs> but, uh, like, we don't have to call anybody. They just call us. Brilliant. Uh, want to know about us like the media people they just wanted they're like oh what's going on here we want to talk to you guys mm-hmm. so it's really you know you can work in it so we can feel it um and it's just like boop, this is happening and i don't think it's going to be as fast as something like you know like me too happened like over a day and, mm-hmm. but i you know i think it's something that um i i think in two or three years the culture will have moved dramatically on this point. Yeah, uh, I agree. And I, that's what I think. I agree wholeheartedly. And I think, yeah, it's just you guys are growing. You've already grown very quickly, and it's just how happening. So congratulations to where you've gotten so far. And cool. we're here rooting for you <laughs> to keep going. To keep going, don't give up. Um, so where can we find you? Where is the best place? We want to sign up the newsletter. We want to find out more information about Aegis. How? Where you have a website? Aegis. Yeah, we have this um, very difficult to uh, pronounce website. Uh, mm-hmm. But if you forget that, you can just we're number one in the Google search. If you type in Aegis, it'll come up. Ah, oh, great. Yes. We're um, we've hired a new CTO and we're rebuilding our platform. So um, the platform is going to become much more um, media rich and interactive over the next few months. Oh, cool! I like the interaction too in 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 on Instagram, and your we are ages, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's uh, yeah. We have Instagram. Um, we have Facebook. We and we have a pri- what's interesting. We have a private Facebook group um, mm-hmm. that's highly interactive. That's great. Um, Looking forward to that gap. Just- <laughs> but yeah, so Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, we are ageist. W-E-A-R-E-A-G-E-I-S-T. Is that correct? 
I'll put it all in the in the, in the comments wherever we are. Wherever it's, 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 we post this, um, but it's any platform. Everybody, you know, there's Instagrammers who prefer their Instagram platformer and platform, and Facebook people prefer Facebook. But the good thing is that we can find you everywhere. Um, and that newsletter as well, I highly recommend it to everybody to to sign up for that newsletter. It's once a once a week, more or less. Um, no, not more or less. Every Thursday morning. 6 a.m. Eastern Time, it goes out. Yes, okay, uh, that's it. <laughs> and you are spot on with that. Damn, it's so good. Um, so really, thank you so much, David, for Pleasure. sharing your time and your insight you. and your inspiration. I keep doing what you're doing. Um, I absolutely thank love you. it. And um, yeah, so kind. have a great day and congratulations. Okay, take care, Zara. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.